Welcome back to the Triple T Ranch and Sawmill. We're going to replace this inner barrel right here that's burnt out with this brand new one, 16 gallon. I'm going to make a little project out of this hog panel. I'm going to keep this rocket stove that feeds this retort stoked all day and make lots of smoke. And we're going to test some charcoal that we create here, fabricating a shelf unit out of that hog panel. This is about 22 pounds of charcoal right here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to repair this retort. I've got a new grease bucket. This is a 15 gallon bucket. It goes inside of this uh, retort. Now this retort, I got a video on how I made that. We're going to take the viewers comments to improve what I had in here before. I'll be converting looks like oak, hickory, elm, cedar, and it looks like a little bit of pine today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. One subscriber suggested that I put the holes in the bottom of the barrel instead of my lid, which is very good because the lid wore out prematurely. So I'm going to drill three or four holes right here in the bottom of this barrel. That's what it looks like down the bottom of the retort and uh, you're going to see this a lot easier to pull this bucket out than it is to put it in. So this serves a lot of purposes. It provides the fuel for heat, but also you can see it slows the heat down to keep it from coming through the flue too fast. So I load the rocket stove and the flame will shoot through this hole right in here, up into this barrel and ignite all this, these different limbs and pieces of wood I've got in here and help generate the heat. So we'll see over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit here when I get this started. Now this is fat wood that we harvested right here off our property. An old pine that fell over. So this works really good for a fire starter. Let's see what we can do here. So I've got cedar and white oak in this box right here. This rocket stove. And I'll show you in a minute how it starts drawing. This stuff burns really hot. The outer barrel here is only about 130 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 degrees centigrade. If you decide to, uh, you want to make some charcoal in your backyard, the only thing that's really difficult is you have to maintain the firebox. Isn't this cedar beautiful? We'll put some of that in there. 383 degrees centigrade, 740 degrees. Fahrenheit. We've been going 30 minutes. This this is loaded with both seasoned and green wood. 
probably mostly greenwood. And you'll see it uh, spewing gray smoke sometimes and white smoke. Sometimes I can achieve pyrolysis in just four hours or so. I've done it as much as uh, quickly as two and a half hours or three with uh, seasoned wood here and in here. So we'll see what happens today. It's a perfect day for it. It's raining. Can't do much anything else. I'm working in the shop. So. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but now the bottom of the retort is red. Okay, so that's unusual. It almost looks like some paralysis has started in, the, in there. But it may just be coming from the uh, rocket stove there. Rocket stove still delivering the heat. It's going to be a while but longer. Let's see, I started at 10.30. So we hadn't even been in it two hours yet. Plenty of smoke. If you do this in a neighborhood, you better warn your neighbors. It's time for lunch, so I'm going to be gone for 30 minutes or so. You can just see it in there. I forgot to mention that the first of the uh, the video, some of that paint, some of that smoke was paint. So it was 10.30 when we started. That's pretty good. Now there's no reason to keep loading the rocket stove. Once the paralysis starts, it, it feeds itself. It makes its own heat. This metal is just an old sign that I found. It'll make a perfect shelf. here and I didn't hear any more paralysis going on so I decided I better better check this because when you mix green and seasoned wood together uh, the season fires off first and the green is somewhat later so all I got to do to find out if this works is See if I can pick up on this barrel. So, it hasn't converted to charcoal yet. Let me get you over here where you can see this. So, just smoking out the top. It, um, all the seals in these barrels, they're burned up the first time we, we ever fire it off. So, that's what's happening there. So what I'm going to do is load this barrel back up <coughs> and get the rocket stove going again because it's been three hours. That's almost time for it to, to make. So it, it wouldn't take much more, so I'm going to fire that one more time. Loaded it a second time, that ought to nudge it on through the process. This should be it, this should make it work.
Let's see, we've been going at it four hours. I can hear the process is going. Some of the gas is coming out of the top of that lid there, I can see. That's definitely paralysis. Usually when you got clear smoke coming out, you're done. But I'm gonna wait till it quits raining before I go out there and check. We've had plenty of time for it to go to paralysis. So what I normally do right now is I'll take what's in here out and I'll I'll close everything up and starve it from oxygen. And in the morning after everything's cooled off, we'll pull that inner barrel. And if it's really light, we know we made it. If it isn't, I have to start all over again, put some more wood in. But it's never not made it in four hours, as far as I remember. So I'm gonna button it up. Well, it's the next morning, rained all night. We'll see what we got in here. So when you check your, uh, your retort the next day after making charcoal, it's kind of like, it's kind of like running a trot line. When you pull up on that trot line, you feel that catfish pull on it like that. That's the way this is, if this is light, I was successful. There's water on top of it here. Oh yeah. Most of it made, if not all. You notice there's no paint on this bucket. A thousand degrees Fahrenheit. We'll do it every time. So here's what we got. That's hickory. Well, it's still on top. This was probably white oak. I had some grapevine in here too. No, I can't tell. All of it made, so it's a successful run. Now let's see if it'll burn. Okay, I'm gonna use my tire rim forge today. <clears throat> But I'm just going to flip it over like this because that flat metal, I want to lay it across here. I need a little more rim across. So here we go. I'm going to load it up with some charcoal. What I'm going to do is blacken some steel that I'm going to put on that that's going to go on the shelves. There you go. Here's some blue charcoal. If anybody knows what causes that, I'd like to know. This came off the bottom of the barrel, which I think is hotter. But I get this almost every time I make charcoal. And you notice that none of this, uh, all of this burned. And we had a little bit of secondary burn right here, but not very much. So that means I starved it of, of oxygen properly. I just gotta make sure I don't melt these. 
Just lay them on there like that. it's done just wanted to say real quick that this came out of this right here and this came from the sawmill when we were building it caught it with the blade pulled it up out of the dirt so let's go install it and you'll see what we're going to use it for they're probably wondering what I built here so you're going to tell them I asked you to build a shelf put my cutting boards up so that I can get to them yep. easily without having to hunt so is that going to work for you yeah I like it let's hang it Gonna kind of go with my other unit that you made me. Yeah. All right. Let's hang it. And I have lots of room to go estate sailing and get some more. All right. Well, hope everybody enjoyed this video, the making of the charcoal, and then this side project here, the cutting board rack. Everybody have a blessed week.